Commander, Bill Shepard. Soyuz pilot, Yuri Gidzenko. Flight engineer, Sergei Krikalov. The crew of the first expedition to the International Space Station was ready to put its years of preparation into practice. On October 31st, 2000, at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, they boarded a Soyuz spacecraft and launched a new era of world cooperation Four, in space. Three, two, one. We have ignition. We have ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of the Soyuz rocket, beginning the first expedition to the International Space Station and setting the stage for permanent human presence in space. After a two-day trip, the Soyuz approached the orbiting station and docked to the Zvezda module's aft docking port. A permanent human presence on the station began November 2nd as Shepard followed Gidzenko and Krikalov into the module that would be their home for the next four and a half months. Before that day was over, they'd called home and received congratulations and begun the work they had trained for more than three years to do, set up a series of sophisticated modules for the long-term tasks of science and technology development and make the station a place where people can live on orbit. During the first days, the crew members installed and activated systems that make the station livable. Oxygen and water generators, air scrubbers and toilets. Before tackling the computer and communications systems that facilitated station command and control by flight controllers in the Russian Mission Control Center outside Moscow. And a backup system for docking progress supply ships, as well as responding to the unexpected finding a bent pin on a battery connector cable or dealing with a buildup of condensation in the air conditioner. The station crew received its first delivery of food, clothing and hardware on a Russian cargo ship on November 17th when the automatic docking system on that progress ship failed to lock onto its target. Gidzenko activated the backup system and used hand controllers inside the station to remotely maneuver the ship to a safe hookup with the Zarya module. The crew spent the next week unpacking the supplies inside, then reloading the craft with garbage and equipment that was no longer needed on board. The following week, on December 2nd, the International Space Station crew welcomed its first visitors. Astronaut Brent Jett docked Endeavour to ISS, and his crew spent the next six days installing and outfitting the station's new power plant, featuring the largest solar arrays ever flown in space, which provided ISS with the electrical capacity to run its environmental systems in all its modules, opening up the Unity node to the crew permanently. The hatches between the two ships were opened for the first time on December 8th, and veteran U.S. Navy officers Shepard and Jett called upon the traditions of their service. Alpha Endeavour, the, the crew requests permission to come aboard. Endeavour, permission granted. Endeavour, arriving. The crew spent a day together to transfer supplies before Endeavour undocked, backed away, and gave everyone their first good look at the newly expanded space station. The expedition crew set to work routing power from the new solar arrays into all modules of the station and began some biomedical and engineering experiments. Their routine also included inspection and maintenance of station systems and a regular regimen of exercise designed to maintain the fitness of muscles that get less of a workout than usual in a weightless environment. The day after Christmas, the Progress ship, which had been undocked prior to the shuttle visit, was returned to ISS, with Gidzenko again guiding it in to a smooth docking. Since the launch of the next shuttle flight to ISS was deferred to allow a thorough inspection of cables in the orbiter's solid rocket booster system, it was on the station crew's 100th day in space, February 8th, when the Progress cargo ship was undocked for the final time in advance of the arrival of Atlantis the next day. That shuttle crew delivered Destiny, the International Space Station's American-built laboratory module. Shepard showed it off while explaining how it will change life on the station. It's about a little over 30 feet, uh, hatch to hatch, and it's full of bays for racks. We have six areas here 
I'm going to put experiment racks in. And forward, you'll see the hatch where the shuttles will be docking in the future when they come to visit Alpha. We've got uh, computers set up. This is where we're going to control the lab from. We're tied into all the computer systems on the station right here. This is uh, what we call in the service module a central post, but we might, we might call it the bridge here in uh, the lab. We have uh, one computer that shows us all our, our planning uh, for the day and what we're supposed to be doing for each activity in the lab. And we have our uh, control computer here, which is our means by which we look at each system on the station, and we can tell the computers and all the hardware what to do. You see uh, white sheets in front of areas where we don't have experiment racks on board. This is because the subsequent shuttle flights are going to come up uh, starting about three weeks from now. We're going to outfit the lab with many different types of experiments. Uh, we have research in six or seven basic scientific areas, uh, life sciences, material science, earth and uh, space science, and a lot of other new and exciting things that are going to come to station. During the following week, Shepard and crew took a break from setting up Destiny to take a little trip. They switched off the lights on ISS, boarded their Soyuz spaceship, and undocked from Zvezda. Yudzenko flew the ship to a docking at the forward end of the Zarya module at the port facing down to the Earth, opening up Zvezda's rear docking port for another progress ship, which arrived at the end of the month. Back inside ISS, the Expedition 1 crew members switched gears. After four months of unpacking and setting up, they began to pack their personal gear, preparing to turn the station over to the second Expedition crew to look forward to reunions with families and friends and to reflect on their part in getting the International Space Station off on the right foot. What I want out of this flight is for people to say that uh, the first crew did a good job and they came home safe and they, they left a, uh, you know, a good ship in orbit. Congratulations, Atlantis, on your highly successful mission, and of course, welcome home, Shannon, from your record-setting flight above Mir. When Shannon Lucid returned from her most recent mission, she was hailed as a hero. The first woman in the world to fly in space five times. The first American woman to fly as a crew member on board the Russian space station Mir. And when her four-and-a-half-month mission on board the Russian space station